Tonight on the Goblin's Corner. Our planner series, The Feywild. That's how we roll. 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 Welcome to the Goblin's Corner. My name is Eric. And I'm Matt. And tonight... We're talking about uh, our first in a planner series. Yeah, we're talking about the Feywild. Excellent. Now, there's a lot of things going on with the Feywild. Recently, Watsi came out with a new book. Not yet. Not yet. Well, it's coming. Oh, yeah. They've, well, by the time this comes out, it should, it, be, should be, it should be very timely. Very close, yes, because we do record ahead of time. Not, not very ahead of time, but sometimes ahead of time, at least a week. Yes. Because I need time to edit. Yes. But... Before we get to all of that and about the Feywild, we've got... A question of the week. All right. So lay it on me. What do we got? Okay. So I'm I'm sticking on theme today. Feywild, perhaps? Indeed. All right. All right. So you are an arch fey warlock. Sure I am. What type of fey hmm. would you make your oath to as a warlock or your pact or what have you? That's an interesting uh, question. Well... I've got two ideas. Okay. Because I don't always, I never have. Right. Have I ever, since we've done this, have one idea? I mean, no, but that's because I haven't asked you who your favorite megaphon is. That's a good point. All right. <laughs> so the first one I think that would be amusing would be a, um, a quickling. Sure. Sure. I can. I could see my warlock casting time haste. stop, haste, lots of movement based spells, expeditious retreat. Sure. Running. And then, I guess, just blasting. Maybe their blast would have a slow effect. That would be pretty badass. Yeah, I can see that. And then the other one, and this is going to this is gonna surprise you a little bit, because I've been thinking of 3.5 recently. Mm-hmm. You remember the Blood Magus? Yes. Okay, so imagine a warlock devoted to a red cap. And basing all of their powers off of blood magic. Okay, I can see that. So now, blood teleportation, all the uh, other things from I mean, that. There's plenty of things that you could do to to just reflavor spells that already exist as well, like uh, thunderstep, for mm-hmm. example. Okay, so you just uh, splort in and out. And uh, the damage is changed from thunder damage to something like constitution damage or. Yeah. Even, well, in the case of a red cap, slashing damage would oh, be. Oh, yeah. That would be very appropriate. Good. Absolutely. So those are a couple of ideas because I didn't want to go with like the typical tropes of like hag or, you know, the, the uh, some kind of a ladron or something like that. Sure. Sure. What about you? Well, I enjoy my nature and, uh, there's a good chance that an Oriad, right? Let's explain what an Oriad is for those playing the home game. Okay, so a Dryad is a Fae that is tied to a tree. Sure. An Oriad is a Fae that is tied to a mountain. Okay. And I like mountains, so. <laughs> really going that Goliath route, huh? Hey, look, I am what I am. Actually, a Goliath that is a warlock to an Oriad would be pretty cool. Very in point. Yeah. The only thing more on point would be a dwarf. Uh, yeah. Or a stone elemental. Or a stone, uh, a uh, rock gnome. Oh, a rock gnome would, would work too. Yeah, yeah. Or deep gnome. Yeah. Actually, there'd be a lot of different things. A Zorn. I want a Zorn warlock. That's what I want, really. A Zorn lock? A Zorn lock. A Fae Zorn lock. Think about that, guys. That's that would be awesome. Terrible. That would be awesome. Are you a Zorn? Or do you just like gyms to eat? Write to us, info at goblinscorner.com, or you may reach me, eric at goblinscorner.com, or me, matt at goblinscorner.com. And of course, you may find us on all the things, like Twitter and most and, and other things, too. Yeah. We have a Discord server, guys. You should join it. It's fun. We have a YouTube channel. It's true. You should join it. You should, in fact, join our YouTube channel as well. But you should come join our Discord channel, and you can talk to me, because Matt never checks it. All right, let's talk about the Facebook. That's fair. All right. So tonight's episode, we are discussing the Feywild. Now, this is the first of our planner series because we wanted to start talking about terrains. We've done some. We did swamps, of course. Sure. And we'll get to other ones as we move along as well. But 
we thought it'd be kind of fun to do the Feywild for a couple of reasons. A, obviously, Watsy announced a book. This seems relevant right. to our interest. And so we figured we'd throw down a little touchstones or so to work with some stuff in terms of games, storyline, thematics, get you guys planning your next game. Absolutely. Also, for a, a less obvious reason, most of you haven't met me, but I love Fey storylines. I'm I'm a big fan of them. I like Fey locations. Uh, so for me, I think that it is something that I would like to get out there. And Watsi's book is, it's an adventure. It is not the Feywild setting. And so I would like to kind of expand that scope a little bit. And from what I've looked at for that setting, it's kind of a very happy-go-lucky fantasy style carnival thing, right? Kind of. Uh, yeah. Kind There's a kinda. little, there's a little, little well, that's, that's how, wackiness as that's well. That's what it's supposed to be. Right. Now. It has taken a left turn. But that's good because I like left turns. And and to be perfectly honest, when I play the Feywild, it's usually something that's a lot more wild, hor- horrifying, I guess yeah. would be the best way to describe it. It's, it, it, but then again, there's other types of Fey Wilds as well, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, World of Darkness is the perfect example of the scary as sh- Fey Wild because it's the hedge. Right. I mean, they have kind of two version ish of it. Mm hmm. The newer version is, is basically like an alien abduction story where you, it's like you just you get out of the hedge. You don't know what the hell happened. Right. And all you know, is something's chasing you. And at any point in time, you might get dragged screaming back into the hedge. I love that sort of thing. I do. <laughs> now, if you're the type of person that likes to play more of a happy-go-lucky campaign with the Feywild, there's other options as well. We're going to talk about all these options. We're going to talk about a little bit about the terrain. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the denizens of the Feywild. Sure. And maybe some different versions as well, because it's changed significantly over the last 30, 40 years. Last... I mean, 4,000 years. Yeah, well, there's also the, the mythos behind it all. Sure. So we can, and you know, you know that a little bit better than I do, actually. So we can maybe go into some of that depth. So why are we discussing the Feywild? Well, flavor, as always. That's what we're Storytelling. about. Now, this is one of those things. If you want to run a campaign in the Feywild, look, you can do the research. We've done it for you. At least some of it. We, well, we haven't done... I haven't done 4,000 years worth of research. We haven't done detailed research either, but we have done a little bit of research. Sure. Enough for this episode. So let's talk a little bit about the Feywild. First off, why is it called the Feywild? Like, what are the names of the Feywild? Because it's had different names over the years. Sure. For Dungeons and Dragons and a couple other games, they call it the Feywild. But it's also Arcadia in some writings avalon Mm -hmm. the the mystic isle of avalon sure was actually them taking him to the realm of fey uh him being king arthur yes camelot Camelot. it's only a model Uh, the hedge yes Uh, one of the proper names for it is simply fairy which is the realm of the fey correct so let's talk a little bit about the mythology like where does all of this stem from that changes also from uh, source to source, right? Mm-hmm. Because fairy could be the home of the fae. It could be the prison of the fae. Mm-hmm. It could be the plane of the fae. Or it could be the refuge or some combination of all of them. So depending on your source is going to determine how the fae feel about the fae wild. And you can pick and choose. And mix and match. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It could be both a refuge and a prison, or it could be just another overlapping dimension, whatever it is. And in fact, uh, one of some settings like Forgotten Realms, for example, suggests the Feywild is just an echo of the material plane, much like the um, Shadowfell is an right. echo. Yeah. And I think that's fifth edition's take now yeah, as well. I know. I remember when the Shadow, Plane of Shadow was just a demi plane. <laughs> Just, you know, it's it's grown so much, guys. Right. They well, it's just a little demi plane off in, off in the ethereal, and now look at them. They're all grown up. They're proper planes to their own. And the Feywild 
used to be a transitive plane as well, because it was a way for even non-magic users to do fast travel. Oh, but, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, if you could, if you went to a crossroads and there was a fay there, you could do a favor for them, play them some music, recite a poem, what have you. You could please them. And depending on how pleased or unpleased they were, determined how it affected the, your travel. So you might instantly be there the next night or, or you 30 could be years, three days, 30 years pass yeah. and everyone's dead. Yeah. Or they could just send you in the opposite direction. And oh God, like halfway across the world. Sure. If you rolled really poorly or you could be or turned into a cat. Really poorly. Well, I mean, they are fake. That's true. Uh, one of the things that the Feywild is most known for as well is it being the home of the elves, along other creatures that we will get to at some point. Sure. And depending upon your campaign, maybe they're refugees from that plane, maybe they were cast out, or maybe they're trying to get back. And once again, could be all of those things. It could be something great. It could be something terrible. If it's the land of fairy, it's probably both. Also, depending on which line of thinking you decide to play with goblins were originally from fey yeah so the seely and unseely courts of the goblinoids and all of the beautiful creatures on the seely court a lot of different mythos and of course you know the various cultures obviously the irish had a lot of that and sure. uh, other cultures as well have added to what it is nearly every culture honestly yeah yeah somewhere even uh what is it native americans have uh Nunehi. Dif yeah, and yeah, different. Which I'm certain I mangled the pronunciation of my apologies. We're idiots. That's what it comes down to. We can't pronounce anything. We're a bunch of idiots. But we do know that everyone, every culture has some sort of fairy creature. Sure. They may not call it that, but there's some kind of spirit, right? Right. So let's talk a little bit about the unique challenges involved in navigating the Feywild. Well, the first one is travel. Yeah. Speaking of navigating. There's so many things you can do, so many ways you can be killed. One of the funny things about travel in the Feywild is it can contain every natural terrain, right? Mm -hmm. So now you've got all of the problems of natural terrains with the added benefit or added problems of supernatural features. Yes. Another thing that is consistent across most mythos in the Feywild is that it's very, very easy to become lost and very difficult to become unlost once you've lost yourself. Yeah, and many games kind of exploit that spatial dimension problem or even time. Yeah. Fall asleep in a, uh, what is it, a fairy ring? Yeah. A little ring of toadstools. You wake up, you're aged 50 years or... Or you've been asleep for 100 years, you look like yourself, and the world has passed you by. Correct. So uh, from a thematics aspect, this gives the storyteller infinite possibilities to mess with their players, or to create some dramatic tension, or to create some interesting assailants. Just the very terrain of the Feywild is hazardous or beneficial. Sure, because not everything is bad. Right. It's subject to whim. Speaking of which, space itself subjects to whim. So, for example, let's say you're walking along, you're in the Feywild, you encounter a snowstorm. You're slogging through the snowstorm. You hit the next hill, now you're on a sunny glen. Sure. Or a swamp. That could be... Or the mouth of a black dragon. Like, all of that is possible. Absolutely. It also depends on who's in charge. Yeah. Like you could literally have a straight line down a forest of snow on one side and somewhere on the other. Or night and day? Yes. It, me personally, if I were to find a line like that, that's how I know where I don't want to be. Because that is clearly contested area. That is a boundary that I don't want to skip back and forth across. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a wall right there. <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Uh, another example, you could roll up on a gingerbread house. And be like, oh man, I got free lunch. Surprise, it's corpses. You just didn't know it was an illusion. Illusions exist everywhere. Or it's corpses of living gingerbread men. Oh, 
Why not? How meta. It's, it's, I love that. Yeah. It's the Why fame. Not? Yeah. So literally any type of natural terrain. Now, one of the things that several different games, not just D&D, but also other uh, game systems have talked about is it is a land of extremes. So if it's a mountain, it is a mountain turned up to 11. Yes. If it is an ocean, it is a vast ocean. Uh, a good example. Like, so we'll say, let's say it's a mountain, right? Maybe in the prime, it's just a straight up mountain, right? You climb that mountain, right? It's made yeah. of granite. If it's, it's a mountain, very mountainous, it's very mountainous, just, you know, yeah. go to any mountain, take a picture. There you go. There you go. If it's a Feywild mountain, there might be crystals jutting out of it. Sure. There's a couple of uh, Zorn just partying. There's, there might be glowing lights that stream from the top of the mountain into the sky. As there the, should be. As there should be. And the clouds look like a giant bird or something like that. Like, it's ridiculous. Like giant druidic monoliths that just run a spiral up the mountain. Mm -hmm. Anything. Or maybe the, maybe the rock biter from uh, Never Ending Story is actually the mountain. And it rises up and is like, hello. Gives you a handshake and crushes you with his hand. Yeah, my big strong hands. It can be any of that. Sure. Use your imagination. Have fun with it because it can be all of that. Now, to that end. When you're speaking of terrains, all terrains have natural dangers. You know, swamps have quicksand that you throw your paladin in. We know that. Yes, sink to the bottom and then use them as a stepping stone. Indeed. I I only brought that one up so that I could beat you to the punch. That was literally my purpose. It's not there. like I got something out against paladins. You know I love paladins. I know you like to what? drown them. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I'm playing a paladin next game. Okay. Maybe he'll be a paladin of a Feywild character. Yeah, the uh, ancient oath paladin. Oh, or the oath of the ancients. Good call. Yes. Yeah, that's what's up right there. That is the best paladin, as far as I am personally concerned. Pay a little green knight? Sure. Yeah, why not, man? Okay, so when you've got natural terrains, you've also got not just the uh, terrain dangers, but it's going to be inhabited by plants and animals. Mm -hmm. So let's so, talk a little bit about the dangers that are inherent in terms of like natural dangers. Okay. Take a mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Mudslides, rock slides, avalanches, depending on the mountain. Uh, Freaking yetis and <laughs> all manner of snakes. So, a way to look at it is, if you're gonna, if you fall down a normal mountain, you might scrape your legs on some rocks because the rocks are sharp. The rocks in the Feywild might literally be made of razors. They could, or they might catch you, or they might catch you. Maybe they're made of jello. That's it, could, possible. it could literally be Anything. something helpful, something harmful. Maybe you fall down the mountain and uh, what was it? The uh, the the rock self that you were talking about? Oh, the Oread? Yeah, the Oread. Maybe an Oread catches you and just carries you up the mountain because you're a stupid human and you can't climb. Or they catch you and they toss you the rest of the way down the mountain, depending upon their whim. So yeah. it's 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 literally a land of extremes. I would actually, here's a great idea. I would suggest if you're playing in the Feywild and you come across some kind of terrain or some kind of encounter, flip a coin. As to whether or not it's going to be positive or negative? Yes. I would roll a D6. Okay. One is beneficial. Uh-huh. Six is not beneficial. Not a, they attack. And then the other ones are natural. Oh, just whatever. Yeah. Okay. I like that as well. It is a... Candy swamp. It is a fearful swamp, or it's just a swamp. Nice. And you can tone it up and down depending upon the severity that you want for your characters. Yeah, you could have a, a you know, if it's a really bad swamp, you could have a, a tribe full of red cap alligator barbarians running around in there. Just... Down with those alligator <laughs> barbarians in the swamp. Yeah. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go listen to our swamp episode. Sure. So obviously, surviving can be difficult. Food yes. may be difficult. Very. Because it may not be food. Well, it may not be food or much in the Persephone Going style into world. Hades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you eat something, you may have made a contract or a bargain by eating the food and drink. So we're going to get into themes a little later. Sure. So we'll touch on that in a moment. But yeah, you don't 
just because it looks like an apple doesn't make it an apple. Could be poisonous, could be magical, could be cursed. You, you might, don't know. Might eat an apple, turn into an apple tree. It's true. Could be how that apple tree propagates. We encourage all storytellers to be as ridiculous or sadistic as they like. Maybe both. Yeah. Certainly both. Weather is also a severe problem in the Feywild. Let's talk a little bit about the weather. What's wrong with the weather? Well, it reacts to the whims of whoever's in charge of whatever domain you're in. So if you're in a domain with a ruler that's in a pissed off mood, you might be getting struck by lightning, frogs falling from the sky. Sure hailstones all what tornadoes what, monsoons lava it doesn't matter like right. something's gonna fall on you it's it's a bad day it's a bad day however if you have pleased the ruler of this particular domain you might have perfect weather for your travel for as long as you maintain in that domain and in fact if you have pleased them greatly you might always have perfect weather while you're in that domain and windswept hair wherever you walk. Sure. And, you know, there's always a, a, a slight breeze that makes your cloak ruffle. Just kind of billow a little heroically. bit in the background. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Your hair whips in the wind like a kung fu master getting ready to fight. It's, uh, it, you, you never, all the sweat just instantly evaporates from your brow. It's perfect. It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So the weather can be a little ridiculous. It, it is just as mercurial as whoever is in control is. And by the way, that is the word for tonight, mercurial. Yeah. Because anything could change at the drop of a dime, which makes it fun. Sure. I, for those people who aren't necessarily great at just uh, stream of consciousness insanity, I would suggest making a table. And if you guys don't know about Matt, he loves tables. I, it's, you, you, yeah, I do. No, you're, I have, you're in Matt Enchanter's castle is nothing but a 40-page table. That's, that's wholly accurate. And there are descriptions in there as well. But. Well, it's mostly tables. Yeah, make some random tables. You know what? Maybe we'll provide some random tables. We um, could do that. Yeah. We could do that. And go at whim. Or... If you don't like what you rolled, just pick something else. The it's first one, the first one that pops out at you, that amuses you. Yep. Follow that storyline with the weather. Now let's talk a little bit about another environmental hazard, which I kind of lit upon earlier, which is time. All right. So time is wildly variable in the Feywild. It can move a little fast. It can move very fast. It can move a little slow. It can move very slow. Or... Backwards. Backwards. You could actually arrive back to w your original plane, if you make it back, before you left. Yeah. And what this gives the storyteller is plot points. Yeah. Straight up, it's a plot point time. Now, for player characters, you're screwed. I'm just going to tell you, <laughs> you're out of luck. But... Just be prepared that you might come back and have to kill your father. <laughs> or you might come back and a hundred years have passed and everybody you know is gone and the big bad's taken over the world. It's plot points for the storyteller to toss something in. Now, this also means that you might have spent an entire adventure and five minutes have passed. Yes. Which is awesome. There's, In fact, there's a game that a friend of ours ran where they were fighting the big bad. They were level one. They went into the Feywild, they came back as level 10, they killed the big bad, five minutes had passed. Right. And the big bad died with a huge surprise on his face. What, what, what happened? <laughs> what, what just happened, man? What happened? And that's what happened, guys. You went into the Feywild and <laughs> got real. But the campaign, arguably, was the Feywild. Of course. But the capstone of the campaign was defeating the level three sorcerer. Yeah. Or, I don't... Was it a sorcerer? I, it didn't. I don't remember. Yeah. It was a big bad. But the point is, is have fun with the time dilation effect. Speed it up in some areas. Slow it down in others. That's even better. Maybe in one domain, time moves really fast. The land of the quicklings. Maybe in a different domain, 
everything moves really, really slow. And the characters might have to journey through different aspects of the Feywild just so they don't outage the rest of the people that are not on the Feywild when they're trying to get back. If there's a timed mission, you've got to go into the Feywild and get this magical fruit so your friend doesn't die. You want to make sure you come back in time so that he's not already a you know, bleached corpse. You cut a deal with the Fey at that point. Yeah, that's really what happens. And then that gets to even more shenanigans, which we'll get to in a hey, minute. You know, I'm just now, saying. I want to bring up one more aspect of time. Okay. Nobody really says this, but you could, when you come back, come back to an alternate version of the world. And this interjects the multiversal theme, which you don't see in many campaigns. No. But this would be a fun thing for a storyteller to try. And if you try, let me know about it, guys. Where you go into the Feywild, or maybe you just get abducted, you come out of it, and now you come back to your world, but your world has actually changed. Maybe the bad guy won. Maybe, I don't know, red means go instead of green lights. Or... I don't know, the, uh, maybe the band Hanson is still famous. I feel like you've went a little too far. Maybe so. Yeah. We, that's, we've, we've gone a few deviations, standard deviations to the right there. The point is, is have fun with that aspect as well, because it could be anything. I mean, yeah. if the, you are interested in running a multi-dimensional game, then the Feywild is a great place to do that. And it, the campaign could be about getting home. Yeah, you turn into a Sliders. Yeah. You, you guys ever watch Sliders? I am aware of Sliders. Okay, so it's it's very similar to that. Sure. So that could be fun. It would. Now let's talk about another environmental hazard of the Feywild, and this I would say is probably most predominant. Yes. Glamour. Talk to me about glamour. All right. So illusions are everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. You could be walking right past a little village, and if they didn't decide to let you know, you never know. Yeah. Because the Feywild exists on layers on layers on layers on layers of illusions. So the concept of reality, what is real, what's not real, hey, it could only be real because the illusion is real until it's not. Right. That is one of the other problems with finding food in the Feywild. Ah, uh, it may not be real food. If it looks real, and it feels real, and it tastes real, you'll think you've eaten, but you're slowly starving. Interesting. You may lay down on the sunny grass on the middle of a meadow, and you're actually freezing to death because you're in the middle of a snowstorm. It's possible. If that's how the ruler of the domain wants it to be. Which would suck. Yes. It's, it's like, all right, guys, you got to roll another character. You're a popsicle. But I was in the middle. I was on a, sh I was on a sunny glen. Yeah, well, that's what you thought. So kind of. What did happen was. <laughs> I would not do that lightly, right? That is, that's obviously something that. Uh, you want to drop some play subtle with. hints. Right. Yeah. The, you got to use some, some fine tuning as a storyteller to maybe give some overt hints. Hey, <laughs> you're slowly freezing to death. How? Yes, yes. So you can't feel your fingers. You see your breath, but you appear to be in a sunny glen. Yep. And then have them figure that out. Or you could be more subtle than that if, you know, you have players that deal in subtlety. Yeah. Finally, the domains themselves, Feywild is cut up by different domains according to who's ruling at, the, at that point. And, it, and that shifts wildly as well. But it's also the entire area is morphic relating to their whims. Yes. You might wake up today and you're in an Alice in Wonderland type of environment and tomorrow you're in Dark Sun. Yes. We really want a Dark Sun game, Watsy. Give us Dark Sun. I'll play it in the Feywild. <laughs> the, the expression on your face. Check. Technically... <laughs> the Fae aren't allowed on Athis. Why? Were they not invited to the party? Nope. Elementals. Oh, that's right. Athis is only connected to the elemental planes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, they might change that. 
Who knows? We can change that. It Well, clearly. Yeah. Well, I'm going to change Oh, my that. God. Can you imagine a Thasian phase? That would... It'd be like some... That's some so Mad awful. Max, yeah, some Mad Max goblins. <laughs> it's, it's some, some post-apocalyptic red caps. That <laughs> would be ridiculous. I, yeah, depending on which side of that coin you were standing on. Oh, my God. That was, yeah, that's... Okay. I need I need an artist stat. I've got ideas. I'm for it. I'm for it too. I would play that. I would totally play that. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about unique creatures, but we'll be right back after these messages. You with the face. Do you like what we have to say? Help our channel rise from the depths like the mighty Godzilla. Please like and subscribe and ring the bell and do all of the necessary YouTube what he said. If there are any topics you would like us to cover, goods or services you would like us to review, or if you would like to sponsor an episode, we would love for you to contact us at info at goblinscorner.com. And we're back. Welcome back. All right. So we've been talking about the Feywild. It's true. Some of the environmental conditions and a little bit of the lore surrounding it. But to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of lore. Go look it up. There's, there's a, yeah. Yeah, there's every culture worth of lore. We're not mythologists. Is that a real word? I mean, no, it's not. But it's going to we be. We kind tonight. of are. But the fact of the matter of. is, the, there's just too much to get into. Yeah. It's too much for this episode. We might do that. We might tackle that at some point. But what we are doing right now is giving you some ideas, some thematics that you can use to run a Feywild campaign, regardless of campaign, whether it's D&D, which is obviously nice, or Pathfinder, Pathfinder, World of Darkness, throw in any Star Wars, Star Wars, like a Feywild world. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. There's nothing but Yodas running around. That's where Yoda came from, guys. No, he wasn't born on Dagobah. He was he was a Feywild creature. He's a proper fey goblin? Yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome. That's my new story. Well, speaking of goblins and feywild creatures, let's talk a little bit about some creatures. Sure. Since we're talking about the feywild, obviously, first and foremost, you would expect to find fey. Really? In the feywild. Fey in the feywild? No. Let's talk a little bit about some of these creatures that we're talking about here. Depending on what game you're playing, you're probably going to have a list of fey to deal with, right? If you're playing White Wolf, you've got trolls and she and puka and what have you. Mm -hmm. And do you, are the rabbit ones, right? They are any animal. Oh. Preferably any adorable animal. Cuddlies. Yes. And I don't understand. That's my hashtag cuddlies. <laughs> sure. That's, that's my official one now. Yeah. I don't understand. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they haven't cropped up in some form or fashion in D&D or Paizo. I bet there's a source book somewhere that has it. I'm sure there's a third party one, but you know, for, for as much as people like animal people, tabaxi, anyone, uh, that's a good point. I'm just kind of surprised that, uh, they haven't popped up yet, but you know, you've got your Aladrin, Lashave, Fomorians. Yeah, Fomorians, yeah. Red crap, red craps. Red craps. Yep. We can go with that. And red caps. Sure, either. Either. Both. Boggles. Boggles. Mean locks. Oh, that's, now that's a monster that's just an asshole. <laughs> if you ever read like, <laughs> what is it? I can't remember which, which edition. I think it was second edition had the best description of a mean lock where they're just little assholes. I mean, they're just, just. just Come at you at the night and just stab you in the eye and shiv you. Sure. Hags. Mm hmm. And hags are something I actually want to talk about just really briefly. Because of Hagborn from Ravenloft. Yes. And that being one of the only ways that hags can procreate and make new hags, that means that whatever that person was is what hag they become, right? So normally people think of hags as ugly, evil creatures. Right. But if you had 
a a the Hagborn Paladin. Okay, that was a pinnacle of good, right? A pillar of the community. Just because they underwent the ritual, that doesn't necessarily make them evil. You, the potential for good hags to exist is out there. Interesting. And that would be a fun spin on a classic monster. Yes, but they still gain their powers from making deals. So you'd have a paladin of the deal. Yeah. That would be interesting. I could see a paladin with a little tie. (laughs) Briefcase. Throws it down, opens up the briefcase. There's nothing but maces and knives in it. I feel like you switched over to devils. Maybe so. Yeah. (laughs) I kind of see him as the same sometimes in my head. Or again, I was thinking of an Acquisitions Incorporated thing where the paladin has like a three piece suit on as well. But I like that idea of like a good hag or even a neutral hag. Sure. And it's just, and and that's something we should mention. All of the creatures in the Fey Wild, they may not be the same on the on the Prime, but in the Fey Wild, it's all about the deal. Like that, we, we do and, get uh, into that. Yeah. Under themes. So let's, all right. So that's an interesting take on hags. Let's grab a couple more creatures, right? S- sprites. Sure. Pixies, satyrs. Goblins of all sorts. So whether it's goblinoids or something from the, I mean, the cast of the labyrinth, basically. Right. It's anything in there. Depending on your source material, mm-hmm. ogres and giants. Yep. Both originated as Feywild creatures. Mm-hmm. The dryads, the sylphs, all of the naiad, n- all of nymphs, the ads. Yeah, all of the ads of of whatever. I'm going to say Fraggles from Fraggle Rock as well. Just be anything Jim Henson. Yeah. I'm going to throw in as well. I'm okay with that. I'd say even I'd say Muppet. Yeah, I want to see somebody with playing <laughs> one Muppets to fight in a D and D game. So hear me out. Okay, I'm 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 hearing you out. Bunsen Honeydew mm-hmm. Artificer. I'm done. <laughs> That's incredible. Somebody said they were running a Muppet game, and they're like, "If if I do do this, what would you play?" And that was the first one I threw out. Because, oh my God, there are so many options, but to me, like that is the one that fits perfectly, yes, but is not readily like the first thing on the tip of your brain. That makes so much sense. Like, animal is a barbarian, no, yeah, obviously, uh, yeah. Fonzie Fonzie could be a bard, a performance bard, like comedy, oratory. uh, the uh, failed performance school part. satire. Yes, absolutely. Cutting words mm-hmm. and tomatoes. Waka waka. We could. We're going down a rabbit hole here. Okay. But I, yeah, I, I, lo- I love everything about this. So you could take some pointers from fairy tales overall, or as we mentioned, Jim Henson movies. Sure. Yeah. I mean anything really. Go across the globe. Create some new stuff, new monsters or new creatures from whole cloth if you want. And there's lots of stuff that we personally don't know about but we've heard from other mythos. Oh, uh, sure. You know, I would say draw from all, all kinds of cultures, not just, you know, typical Western European cultures, but like there's some Eastern lore in there as well. Yes, the Irish have a fair amount of faith. They're not the only ones. Correct. But, you know. Or the Scottish for that matter. No, and everybody's got some of that stuff, as we mentioned earlier. And check out, I mean, even if you want to stay in Europe, check out some of the uh, Slavic fey and some of their... If you want to get, you want to take a ride on the creepy side of Faye, that's that's a good place. Yeah, to that's go. some creepy clown stuff right there. Like, it's like they're wearing a grin. It, it's like it for some of those creatures. It's weird. Yeah. So when creating a new type of Faye, let's think about thematics. Obviously, sure. what do they look like? Oh, well, obviously. Now their shape may take a particular emotion, which I find very interesting. So, hags right? Mm -hmm. They're about the deal. Whatever their deal is, they're about the deal. Pixies are frivolous for the most part. They're carefree face spirits. And again, we're just generalizing this stuff so you can tailor it to your game. Right. Brownies are helpers unless you treat them poorly, in which case they're hinderers at the exact same level of help they would other, they would provide. Or if you're Mad Mardigan, they're a bunch of drunks that hang on to your Also clothes. fair. Yeah. 
<laughs> Stupid daikini. <laughs> That's right. So what kind of dominant emotion shapes them? Right. What drives them? Give them a primary motivation. Turn it up to 11. Yes. You can fine tune it and give them more subtle emotions or subtle caricatures of whatever they are, but it's fun to just go extreme. I mean, that's the whole point about the Feywild is kind of be a little extreme with it. And you can even give them natural jobs. Think uh, Disney's Fantasia, Mm -hmm. right? Where the little pixies are floating around drawing in rhyme and changing the colors of different leaves and stuff like that. That's perfectly viable. Sure. And a world where the landscape is magical, having magical creatures that actually take care of those duties makes perfect sense. A lot of animism thrown yeah. in. And again, if that was true, what else is true? How do you shape this world? Just as a thought. Like in the in the concept of if that's true, what else is true? If there are little rhyme fairies that go around and you start stealing them. Does that weaken the power of the Winter Queen? Ooh, interesting. Right? Maybe, so, maybe Winter goes away. How does that reflect the Prime as well? How do you yeah. tie in this plane with other planes by the creatures that inhabit it? So, just thoughts. We could deep down the rabbit hole there. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Obviously, what game are you playing? More specifically, what type of game are you playing? If you're playing a hack and slash campaign, you've got a bunch of players that want to kill stuff, guess what? They're going to be assailants. Just throw them assailants. Yeah. Give them a couple challenges, some puzzles, maybe some NPCs, some comic relief, but know your players when you're running a Feywild campaign. Just as a thought, if you've got hack and slash players and you want to put them in the Feywild, but you want to turn this into a joke, mm-hmm. literally have a, a fairy sitting there and they're slogging through the same five square feet, fighting <laughs> illusionary assailants the whole time. And then they're just mimicking you? It just for their own amusement. Oh, sure. And then pay the players, the pixie pays the players for the amusement. For some reason, I also think of uh thinking of, I'm thinking about Disney stuff like Jiminy Cricket and stuff like that. But I would have like Jiminy Cockroach, where it's like this cockroach that just advises you and he sits on your shoulder. It's f- that would be your devil, though. It would. Filthy <laughs> asshole. Anyhow. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of fun you can play with different creature types. Again, consider the flavor of the Feywild, whether it's Arcadia, whatever you want to call it, right? Right. Um, remember that wonder and fear come equally. Yes. Terrific originally meant inspiring and terrify yeah yeah (laughs) absolutely let's talk a little bit about some other creatures you might expect in the feywild well you actually brought up something that's perfectly viable for the feywild the little cockroach on your shoulder Mm -hmm. oh animals of all types like insects and beasties yep they're they're animals of all types in the feywild but dot 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 they can be intelligent or magical or both. Or both. And they can be just as wily as the more magical creatures. Sure. Because you can make a deal with a cat and be just as screwed as if you made a deal with an Eladrin. Uh, yeah. There's, there's a whole because concept that about cat that is making Alice of Wonderland. Bingo. And if that cat's making deals, why is that cat making deals? Yes. Also, what does that cat want? Anything. You know how we play. Anything that is intelligent and has the physical ability can take class levels. Mm Mm-hmm. So, raccoons have these cute little things called thumbs. That means that they can use somatic components. Or they could be hackers. Because you could have a Feywild in Shadowrun. Sure. Raccoon. A hacker raccoon. You're making deals. A raccoon? A raccoon. That's a new thing, guys. Hashtag raccoon. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Think about that. Uh, whether or not it's an animal and whether it's a magical beastie, you know, have fun with that. Whether it's extinct, doesn't matter. Could have dinosaurs. There's nothing to say you can't have dinosaurs. You should have dinosaurs in the Feywild. I want dinosaurs in the Feywild. And they should be intelligent. 
I made a note about this. Mm-hmm. Now, you're aware that ankylosaurs are your thing. Are my favorite dinosaur. It's true because they're the best. An ankylosaur archfey. Mm-hmm. That's that's my new answer for who am I cutting the deal with? I have so many questions. I'm now. cutting the deal with the ankylosaur so archfey. Many, so many questions. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, we talked about chimeras in previous episodes. What a great place to throw in some chimeras. Yeah, there's there's been arguments, depending on which part of the lore you go down, that owlbears weren't created by a crazy mage. Oh, they bur- they burst out of the Feywild? Yep. Pissed off and ready to tear thing, people asunder? Yes. Yeah, why not, man? You got jackalopes mm-hmm. and whatever the unicorn bunnies are called, whose name escapes me. Unicorn bunnies? Uh, yes. It starts with an A. Yeah, I don't know. I'll look it up at some yeah. point. And of course, now in fifth edition, displacer beasts are fey wild creatures. They are indeed. They give such great hugs to death. <laughs> Literally, any creature that had the ability by hook, crook, incident, or accident to make its way in the real world could easily be in the fey wild. And that includes other planner creatures. Sure. So, slod. Sure. Because you know I'm all about some I know. slod and other. CN, baby. <laughs> can, can you imagine a slod that has been steeped in the Feywild instead of Limbo? Like a fine brewed tea. This slod has butterfly wings and insect eyes, and he merrily jaunts around with a loot and then smacks you to death with it. <laughs> he impregnates you with pixies instead of more slods. Oh my God, you. <laughs> I see some kind of horror show where you get impregnated with slog, slod eggs. And then your body just bursts into sprites. Those are butterflies in your stomach. Yes. <laughs> they just happen to have human arms and legs. Wow. I'm about to scare the <laughs> out of my characters in the next coming game. That is great. So, again, these are ridiculous ideas. Go with it. Sure. Anything and everything. But the thing is, is because literally the doors can open up anywhere in the real world. Anything that can get to the real world or exists in the real world or existed in the real world can end up in the Feywild. Let's talk about some unique cultures now. Sure. First, you have, obviously, the courts. Right. Now, talk to me about the courts. We have Seely and Unseely. For those who maybe don't know as much about the lore of the Feywild, what's the difference? Generally speaking, mm-hmm. Seely are considered the nice Fey quote unquote good right and unseely are considered the evil fit Mm -hmm. but that's just in place in using material that actually has sealy and unseely right you've also got summer and winter which kind of coincides but not specifically you've got the starlight court which has ties to our vandor and is an actually good fake court like there's also for real the, there's the four seasons there's also the four winds yep there is uh the, f- the what is it the storms yep. is another court there's di- different types of, i'm just thinking from various games whether it's uh world of darkness or D. and then i'm also thinking uh if i don't know if you've ever read jim butcher's uh dress and files there's a lot of like court stuff in there as well sure i would say draw from what you read yeah there's lots of different Fantasy books, there's lots of different game systems as well. Mix and match. It is literally a buffet table to come up with what quartz you want. And if you want some ideas about how to be a low-key bastard hit us with up. the quartz, well, hey, you can hit us up. Also, you can just read a Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, a little Shakespeare. Yep. The original bard. Let's talk about some of the places you can visit in terms of culture. So... Obviously, the courts are where the high-level intrigue and basically you're you're kind of either going to be part of the court or you're going to die as part of the court. I but, mean, you can you can be just a person, right? Because if the court is in the Feywild equivalent of Waterdeep, mm-hmm. right? It's a huge place. Not everybody's going to be involved with the court. Right. And there's a lot of intrigue and stuff like that. But there's also places in the Feywild where just like hamlets and stuff. Sure. Villages. Just a village. Just straight a village. A bunch of goblins doing goblin things. 
doing their nine to five goblin jobs, right? Growing their nine to five goblin apples. They got two point five kids. That point five, by the way, is the tough one. Not in the Feywild. That's that's true. <laughs> see, maybe they're looking for the extra the extra half. No, see the the bottom half is a kitten. Oh, yeah. that makes perfect sense now. Yeah. Goblin kittens. Goblin it, kittens. It's, yeah. it's like centaurs, but with goblins and kittens. So what we're describing here is a concept, obviously, and that is something you can roll with when you're looking at a village. You can have literally a totally different concept each time. Speaking of concepts, villages could, be, could have entirely different economies based off of concepts. Mm-hmm. Like you might have to pay in song. Or dance. We don't take your money here. I want you to dance like your like your life depends on it because it does. Yeah. It's a safety dance. Yes. <laughs> Poetry. Maybe you just have to give somebody a compliment they've never heard. Now, from a storytelling aspect, this is great because this lets you mess with your players, or maybe you've got players that like to act. They're dramatic. Maybe they write poetry. Maybe they're artists. What a great way to add real life skills or lack thereof into a campaign. Imagine a bunch of people that have no artistic skills or they can't sing and dance or whatever, making them do something to pay their way through that and the merry, merry misadventures that would happen. Absolutely. That's a lot of fun to, to play. Yeah. You've also got, as we mentioned earlier, domains. Yeah. So the overarching area, the territory controlled. Right. And domains specifically are controlled by an archfey, mm-hmm. whereas you might have areas that are controlled by courts that aren't domains. They're just in the, in the uh, Feywild at large. Okay. But then you've got islands inside the Feywild that are absolutely controlled by the archfey that runs those domains. So. Each one of those is going to be a direct reflection of the archfey that runs it. So a concept again, or the whim of that archfey. Right. When you're creating these domains, think of maybe a theme. So like the land before time versus some kind of Jim Henson film versus some kind of Disney storybook film. You know, like I, I'm going on films for some reason, but sure. it can be any type of concept, really. It could even be just a concept around loss or sorrow or hope or hatred. So you can even do like emotions and stuff like that. Absolutely. And these archfey exemplify those emotions or concepts. You could also take the concept of building a domain of dread out of Van Richten's. Mm-hmm. And then just tweak everything over to making a domain for an archfey, right? Like, what is their story? How did they get here? Have they always been a fey for that matter? That's a good point. Because how does one become an archfey? Yes. Maybe you can take their place. How cool of a storyline would that be? So we've got a lot of different interesting cultures and areas that you can explore. And of course... We were talking about the concept of themes for the Archfey. Let's let's go into some themes. Well, themes are really important for the Feywild. I would say themes would be the primary thing you want to come up with first. Like have a concept or a theme and then build your your Fey, your monsters, your environment from those themes. And again, you have a problem coming up with themes, make a chart. Sure. Write down a whole bunch of dif- different themes and then literally just roll. And some of some of these themes that we're going to provide for you are individual themes, and some of them are overarching for the, the Feywild in general. Yep. And this is not an exhaustive list. Again, this is us spending a few minutes. Yeah. If that, coming up with some ideas, right? Uh, if you want more ideas, again, let us know. We'll be more than happy to come up with more. So first off, you mentioned this many times. Promises. Mm-hmm. Debts and owing. That's a huge concept, huge theme and to that, explore. That is across much of even the real world concepts of Fae. I would almost say in the lore and just in all of the games even, or the storylines, that's one of those universal concepts you can say is indicative of the Feywild. 
much like dealing with demons or devils, right? Sure. Another concept, reciprocity. Okay. If you take something from a fae, you should have something to exchange. Of equal value. Yes. Because otherwise, they might take something Bad of times. equal value. Bad times. Yeah. You either meet the debt or you accrue the you accrue a debt that they choose how to charge you for. And this can be something as simple as the concept of balance. I want to cross this bridge. Something else has to cross on the other side. Sure. Hey, well, if you, want some, if you want to come across, then you have to allow something to cross in your stead. Maybe if to escape the Feywild or to get into the Feywild, something else has to cross the barrier. Which, if you're trying to escape the Feywild, you might all of a sudden come into a moral quandary because innocent villagers now are abducted. Sure. Because you guys got out. Or to get into the Feywild to save the princess, you've got to let horrible monsters out. out. And while well, you're... six people in your adventuring party? There's... Well, there's these six red craps right here that are... That was on purpose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And yeah, they're just red crapping all over the place. Oh, it's a bloody mess. But you're they're out there wrecking stuff while you're in the Fey Wild trying to find something, and you got to get back. And now it might not be them that's going back through the wall when you cross over. It might be innocent villagers. How do you feel about that? How do you deal with those moral implications? Fun stuff. Yep. Uh, the power of words is another one. Absolutely, words have power. Yes. And, uh, and that comes down, again, promises and bonds and stuff like that. And even simple things. Because in a world that is as fluid as the Feywild is, being able to pin down a concept with words is a power unto itself. Yes. And this comes down to what you say and what you mean. And a lot of times... There's a lot of interchange between what's what's being said and, and what you're hearing yep. or what you think you're hearing. And if you're a clever storyteller, you can exploit that. Or if you're a clever player, you can exploit you that. You can totally exploit that. Uh, cleverness is another concept. And just just as a uh, a quick aside, there was a game that I was watching being played on YouTube and somebody cut a deal with a fae mm -hmm. and they said, Oh, you're going to owe me a favor later on in the, in the conversation, the DM mistakenly said, do me a favor, keep yourself alive. My response to that would have been sold. That is the favor I will do you. Yep. <laughs> nice. Unfortunately, the person was in the moment and didn't catch it, but. Which brings us to cleverness. Yes. Obviously, the concept and theme of being clever is pretty much indicative with the entire Feywild. Right. And following that up, mindfulness. Yeah, knowing what's going on. And knowing what you're saying, knowing what is being said, like actually paying attention. You can't be in a Feywild game and poking at your laptop, playing video games on your phone, you need to be present for this. You got to pay attention to that stuff. Otherwise, you're going to stay there forever. Or you're going to be like, you're going to hear something. I got turned into a toad? How? Halfway out of the corner of your ear, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, no, I, I'll do that. Well, you said it. Mm -hmm. The concept of beauty whether it's natural beauty, unearthly beauty, creepy beauty, all the famous flavors of beauty, yeah. your concept of what is beautiful. So hags, for example, they hate beauty. And yes. they, they view ugliness as beauty, which is kind of interesting. Whereas nymphs, on the other hand, are unnaturally beauty. Yep. And, you know, beauty is famously in the eye of the beholder, right? Sure. At, or literally the, the yeah, beholder. A beholder. A beholder, yeah. yeah. Any. Well, that's why naiads hang around beholder sharks. Ah, oh, that makes perfect sense now. The concept that the Feywild puts the natural in supernatural mm -hmm. 
it is natural with the volume turned past <laughs> right? it's, it's where you just keep turning the knob you hear it clicking and you just keep turning it went anywhere. past 11 but it's still going yep uh everything isn't what it seems that's a huge concept and theme to explore and I, again goes back to glamour illusions your word trickery yeah it's all i mean the concept of trickery is a great theme to explore when you're talking about the fate wild the fate wild is also a place out of space and time yes while it overlaps the material plane or the world depending upon your game and while it may even look in many ways like the world you came from it is definitely not the world you came from and exploiting that as a storyteller is a lot of fun to really get into some interesting stories and plots. Yes, it is a place apart. And there, one of the things you can do is take, because they're mirror, vaguely mm -hmm. mirrored, right? It is a, a plane that runs parallel to the prime plane. Waterdeep is called the Jewel of the Sword Coast. Mm -hmm. So when you come across the Waterdeep analog, in the Feywild, it might literally be a city made of gems. Because it's the jewel of the Sword Coast. Yes. And the coast might be nothing but blades. Could be. Yeah. Because it's the Sword Coast. Yep. And so, words have power. Yeah. And words have multiple meanings. So, just something to think about. And we're talking about words and beauty and gems, artistry. You can go into, you know, I would say use all your flowery words, go break out of the, the dictionary, the thesaurus, and go to town. On artistry, I have, I have a theory that the devil came down to Georgia. Right? That song? Yes. The devil came down to Georgia. So Johnny was actually an archfey. Okay. And he... He's... He, he's he f***ed with the devil and, 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 and won the golden fiddle. That's interesting. Yeah. So some, we got a we got a Georgia some boy. random kid out in the woods, right? You know what I'm saying? I I don't buy it. He was a fae. All right, I'm down with that. That's kind of cool. Uh, obviously we mentioned the concept of emotion, which and embodied emotion. Yes. And mercurial emotion. Oh, yeah. And amorality. Yes. Also, the alienness of immortality. Because if you exist for millions of years or five seconds, who knows? Because time is irrelevant. It's completely meaningless. How do you react to normal, quote unquote, things in other dimensions? Yeah. It, time especially since it's fluid and not even necessarily linear where they come from, their whole mindset about such things is completely alien to ours. And exploring that alien mindset is a lot of fun for a game. Yeah. I mean, you could just have an entire game just based on them being basically aliens. You could have a futuristic campaign where abductions happen in a Falians. ufo yeah the phalians man they're it's like everyone thinks it's ufos that are flying around but it's really just extra dimensional beings that trap you and they're all fey well and they take off their helmet and it's a goblin going hey what's going on man have an apple remember in some source material arcadia is the moon yeah i forgot about that we come from the moon mm -hmm. that's kind of cool so think about some of that a lot of different options for your campaign. These themes can then be translated into a couple of ideas that we have given you. Right. And let's talk about some of these. Just some story options. And these are just rapid fire, some stuff we come up with again. But these are some interesting things that you might want to try. So you've got escape. Mm -hmm. uh, players accidentally went to the Feywild and now they have to get out. Easy peasy, right? You get in there, you can't got to get out. Sure thing. It's a hell of a lot harder so to easy. get out. Yeah, it's so easy, guys. It's so easy. Anybody can do that. Just, just walk just right out. Tramp around eternally just, looking for a mushroom just, circle. Just push your way through the hedge. It's not going to hurt too much. You just lose your soul. The hunt. Maybe you're trapped in the Feywild or creatures from the Feywild are attacking members of a town or the adventurers. They're chasing you. 
Maybe the wild hunt has mm-hmm. been called, and it's and now you've got to fix that or escape. How are you going to deal with that? And you have to be careful because if you defeat the hunt, you become the you hunter. Are invited. There's quotation marks there for uh-huh. forcefully <laughs> to join the hunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they they left out the forcefully part. Fetch quest. What what is, what are we talking about here? Um, I need the glowing blue bell ah. from the domain of your cereal. Mm-hmm. Sure. You, hey, your boss needs it. What you gonna do? Yeah, this may happen. Uh, we didn't list this one, but I just thought of this one. Uh, your friend has been replaced by a changeling of some sort. Creature made of sticks and what did they call it? Are they called fetches in World of Darkness? Yes. Yeah. I was thinking fetch quest and they're changelings in other, in other campaigns too, but you've, you, your friend is now like something else and you got to go find your real friend. And that brings us to a rescue of some sort. Maybe you have to rescue someone from the Feywild or go find your friend yeah. because this creature made of, you know, leather goods and metal has taken his place. Or you started in the Feywild and you have to rescue a Fey from wherever they accidentally ended up mm. because those temporary portals go both directions. They wound up in Detroit and they can't get back. They don't have, they don't have Google maps. Yeah. They're lost. You got to go find the Fay. He's lost at a Denny's. It's chain smoking. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> who knows? He's, who knows? It could be bad times. It could be great times. Maybe he's working. He's got, he's got a good, he's got a good nine to five. He met this really nice, person that they're they're having a little back and forth with anyhow so an escort mission okay you have to escort someone through the Feywild or or to somewhere in the Feywild maybe from one toadstool to the next yeah who knows shopping with valuables other than gold we talked about this a little bit maybe you need something and this could be again the fetch quest where you're trying to find something but they don't take gold no sir maybe they take your first dream or yeah. They might take a tear from an angel or... Your first happy memory. Happy memory, yeah. So how does that affect you in story? The Feywild is a great place for a comic relief. Oh, yeah. You know, just... Straight up. Take a minute. Have some fun. Yeah. You know, have a little carnival, if you will. Sure. Party hats and so forth. It is a good place to actually have a court entry game if you want to do a whole court entry campaign or if you're running a campaign and you want to drop your hapless heroes into the middle of some court intrigue this is the perfect way to to have them run from Feywild yep now what would be also interesting is maybe you have an intrigue campaign it starts in a city and then at they level up the intrigue gets more and more difficult until it goes over to the Feywild where the masters of intrigue are going back and forth and you have to navigate and weave through all of that. And you you could even find out that what looked like all of the causes on the prime material plane were actually all being manipulated by from the, Feywild. the Feywild. Sure, and they're just using puppet masters. <laughs> they're just... They're just dangling their strings around and manipulating events on the Prime. How cool would that be? What a concept. And of course, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey time travel. Sure. If time can go backwards and you've got people that have ultimate control of their domains, that means you've got people who can send you backwards, forwards. What have you? Sideways. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. Some ideas, story options, some themes, some creatures, and terrain of the magical and majestic and horrible Feywild. I love it. I know. (laughs) Did we miss something or is there something you wanted to talk about? We absolutely missed it. We missed everything. But if we missed something interesting that you want to hear about it, write to us. Info at goblinscorner.com or you may reach me, eric at goblinscorner.com or me, matt at goblinscorner.com. We're on all the things. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Twitch as Goblin's Corner. Or Instagram as The Goblin's Corner. That's right. If you like our podcast, please subscribe. You may subscribe on your favorite player of choice or, of course, on YouTube. Yep. 
or Twitch. Give us a five stars, a review on iTunes and YouTube, Podchaser. It feeds the hungry algorithm. Feed our algorithm. And it gets our show out to more people. That's right. More people that can watch. Hopefully we can help them, again, build great stories, great themes, and great games. Yep. And if you are watching us on Twitch, hi there. Hi. Please like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, do all the YouTube. Yeah, what he said. All right. That's all the time we have for tonight. Once again, my name is Eric. And I'm Matt. We'll see you next time. Good night. The Goblin's Corner is written and produced by Eric Holden and Matt Staples. Show song by the mighty D20. This is a subterranean production. Basic.